Good morning, folks. My name is Dan. Today's the first in the series on building a bending brake from Home Built Help. This is the brake that they show the plans for on their site. And um, we're just going to build this brake, see how well it works, and see what it costs to build as an alternative for your Zenith project or any of your home building projects where you need a bending brake. This is just the two lengths of 2 by 2 by 8 inch tubing that I got for the base. Lengths are cut in half here, and it just gives you a gives you an overview of what we've got. These are the pieces cut into length. This is for both the uprights, both of the caster tubes and the cross tube. There's a couple of 45 degree angled pieces, which are braces in the back. That's stock that I had, and I just like to use up old stock if I've got it. So we've uh, we've cut them to to length, and we'll clean them up and and uh, get them ready to go. These are still the same pictures of the of the parts ready to be welded together. They've been cut to length. These are everything we'll use to assemble the base. Basically, they're a four inch caster. Total overall height of them with the bases is five and a half inches. So we add that into the height of our brake. These are all locking wheel casters. You can put whatever you want for casters underneath them. I just happen to have these in stock, and I tend to use these casters for a lot of my projects. I had locking casters in stock. If I was buying casters, I would probably just do two locking casters and put them both on the front wheel. Two of these are swivel, two of them are straight casters. Uh, I'll put the straight casters on one end so you can push it around and, and then stir it from the other end with the swivel casters. Here we're starting to jig up the caster tubes and the uprights. One change I made was the uprights. The plans show them at 16 inches long and to me that's way too short. I, I'm still working off of that 35 inch bench height that I want my I want the bed of this break to be. So I've actually extended those uh, according to my math. They came out to be 21 and a half inches long and that looks like that's going to be the right length for them. So I've extended those with only a 16 inch tube that break's going to be Oh, about 30 inches tall it looks like depending on the casters you use if you use the casters that I've used it's which are five and a half inch from the floor to the top of the caster why you'd still only end up with something 30 inches tall and to me that's awful short so I've uh, I've extended them to, to 21 and a half you'll have to adjust them accordingly to what's going to work well for you and your height here we're still jigging that uh, that tube in place or the the tubes in place we've got them clamped up so that they're square to the world my welding table is relatively flat but i still make little adjustments to them here we have actually tack welded the the first one in place um, i've checked everything for square of course and here we're setting up to do the second tube we've got the first one tacked in place and we want them to be the same so i just actually clamped them together that'll give us our our uprights and everything will be at least the same even if you've got one that's not 100 percent square to the world why they're going to match up and be the same so if we've clamped them together to make them the same height to make sure they're they're vertical that way there we started to weld them up and everything is is squared there that's going to work out perfect here are our tubes pretty well welded in place we started to do the layout we're just double checking our measurements to make sure how tall we want this to be how much we're adding with the casters and everything it ended up with the casters welded in place and and to the top of the uprights why we ended up with 29 inches which is where my initial calculations were by the time we add the four inch plate the holes add another inch and then when we go to add the the bed assembly why that will bring that bed height right up to that 35 and a half or 36 inches which is right where we want to be i'm just drilling the holes here to bolt the bed assembly to the base this gets these plates get welded to the base we're match drilling them in the mill it could just easily be done in a drill press you know bench top drill press doesn't make any difference what you've got as long as your holes are where they're supposed to be why you can you can drill them that way and they'll come out just fine this is a mill that we converted to CNC here oh, a few years ago, and I still use it in manual mode an awful lot because stuff like this is easier just to drill manually than it is to program it in. We've got a digital readout on it, so it's real easy to set everything up and, and drill them and countersink them. The plates get welded to the uprights on the top. This 2-inch square tubing is just there as a reference to mount that plate with two inches extending above the top of the tubes, clamped them in place there, and that way I just have to set edge distance and they set on top. The square tubing is clamped to the upright plates that get welded to the to the bases. It's just there as a reference line. It's easier to, to set that two inch tubing on top of our uprights and, and then clamp our plates in place to, to weld them in position. 
Here shows them jigged up and, and uh, ready to be welded. We've tacked the first plate in place. Here we put the spreader in, in position. All I'm doing with this at this point is making sure everything's square and I'm tack welding it in place. I'm not going to permanently weld that in place until we set the bed assembly in and bolt it up. That way I know everything fits the way it's supposed to and we can double check our square on the cross tube and make sure it sits level on the, on the floor. There we've got the casters clamped in place. These are the straight casters that we put on one end. We've just got them clamped in place and we're going to clamp the other end in position too. It's got the swivel casters on. We'll stir it from the other end. There's the other end clamped in place and here it is all tacked together and this is all the welding we'll do on it until we finish the bed assembly. Once we get the bed assembly in place we'll go ahead and finish weld the cross tube into the uprights. We will build the bed assembly next, we'll set it in place, weld everything up, then we'll go ahead and disassemble those two parts and we'll get it painted up. And Once we finish this break we make sure everything works right and I'm satisfied with it. I may very well offer the machined components as a kit. A lot of people, if they decide to build this break, will, will have welding and cutting capabilities, but they may not have machining capabilities. So things like the cam levers, all the pivot pins, and some of those things, some of the adjustments that are machined, I do not offer plans for this. It's not my design. Um, go to homebuildhelp.com. They offer the plans for free and hopefully will continue to do so. Look through their site too. They've got a lot of good tips. They've got a lot of good videos that uh, will help you with your builds. So I, I recommend you take a look at them. But I may offer the machine components. We'll find out how long it takes for me to, to machine those out and build them and just what we can, what we can offer those for. So thanks for taking the time to watch.